Hey guys, welcome back. Now that we've actually played Halo Infinite, we've confirmed that the game does, in some capacity, actually exist, and we have kind of a general feel for how the multiplayer feels, I want to talk about several Halo maps that I would love to see return at some point throughout the game's life cycle. When I was streaming Infinite last weekend, I got asked this question quite a lot, so, you know, I figured it was something that could be fun to turn into a video. So, the maps that I've picked today, I've done so for a few reasons. Number one, they're maps that I personally love. Number two, in some cases, they're maps that I think are painfully underrated and don't get the love they deserve. And three, out of all the fantastic maps in the Halo series, I think that these ones would play particularly well with Halo Infinite's style of gameplay. So, if you're part of the 52.8% of non-subscribed viewers, then don't forget to join part of the iconic 47.2% and subscribe to help me hit 500k subs. And now that you've done that, let's get right into the 7 iconic Halo multiplayer maps that should return in Halo Infinite. Starting off at the number 7 spot, we have Infinity from Halo Combat Evolved. Infinity was a massive CEBTB map that was designed specifically for Halo PC, so it was never in the original release. It's a desert-ish canyon map in the shape of a Lemnis Gate with two massive bases, and I promise you I want Infinity back for more reasons than just its perfect name. I love the size and the scale of Infinity, and given the increased player count and also emphasis on BTB in Halo Infinite, I feel like Infinity would be a great map to bring back. It's also got a lot of verticality as well, like the bridges in the middle of the map, the raised ledges on the canyon walls, and the beam towers in the bases that would play so well into the grapple hook. That's actually a trend that you're going to notice throughout this video. Verticality equals king in a game with a grapple that's as good as Halo Infinite's. And speaking of the beam towers, Infinite's emphasis on the iconic beam towers would just make Infinity even more of a perfect map to bring back. It's got that unique blend of the natural world and the foreigner aesthetic. It's got a great degree of size, scale, and verticality. It's got a great and unique layout, great vehicle gameplay, beam towers, and a name that's one letter off being infinite. Come on, 343, let's see an Infinity remake in Halo Infinite, please. Coming in at number 6, we have High Ground, the undisputed king of 4v4 vehicle maps. High Ground is a fan favourite gem from Halo 3 that played so well in just about every single game type, from Slayer and VIP to One Flag, Assault, Infection, Fiesta, and literally every other game type in the game. Honestly, it blows my mind that there was never a remake of High Ground in Reach, Halo 4, or Halo 5. The openable base gate was a great form of environmental interactivity that made the map especially unique for attack and defend game modes, and is an element of map design that I really want to see make a return in Halo Infinite. And then, as well, who can forget the fact that the Ghost was literally a power weapon on this map? Back in the day in Lone Wolves, it was basically a race to see who could get the Ghost first, and we've not really had that since, at least in like a 4v4 map. The base itself was designed in such a way as well that there were so many great ways to assault it as the attackers, so you could either sneak through the pipe and infiltrate the base quietly and open the gate for your team, or you could kind of do the same but maybe in a, a bit more of a loud fashion by going through the bunker, or you could use Halo 3's equipment to put a grav lift down and launch yourself into the sniper tower, something that I think would be great to do with a grapple hook. I really think High Ground was a map that just kind of speaks for itself. I mean, the amount of different game modes that we used to play on this back in the day that were in matchmaking really just speaks volumes for how good and how dynamic of a map it was, and I really think that it would work so well with Infinite given its re-emphasis on 4v4 vehicle maps. So, for our first honourable mention of the day, we have one of the best 4v4 maps of all time, period. Guardian. Now, the reason Guardian isn't one of the seven maps in the main list is because, technically, it's a spiritual successor to Lockout, which has been remade quite a few times already. Guardian was a map that not only played exceptionally in both casual and competitive 4v4 scenarios, but it also had a really cool setting and aesthetic that I would love to see recreated in the Slipspace engine. I can only imagine how good the Guardian Forest would look in that engine, especially given that the Guardian Sentinel has reappeared in Halo Infinite. To me, it seems like the best time to do it. 
Another topic of 4v4 arena maps, in the number 5 spot, we have Construct, a map that I honestly don't think gets anywhere near as much love as it deserves. Construct was a fantastic, genuinely unique 4v4 map that, again, played exceptionally well in both super casual game modes and also hyper competitive game modes. Its emphasis on verticality is something that I think would work so well with a grapple hook, but at the same time, I don't think it's a map like Sword Beast where you kind of need that verticality tool, so in the case of Sword Beast, a jetpack to traverse the map efficiently. The ramps and grav lifts around the map would balance it out really well. I mean, they did in Halo 3, there was never really a need to have like a portable grav lift. The grav lifts on the map and the, the ramps worked fine, so I don't think having a grapple hook would kind of break the map at all. Honestly, I think, if anything, having the grapple would just add a new skillful way to navigate the verticality as well as the regular ways of doing it. Construct is a map that is long overdue for a remake, so 343, please. Right, for the second honourable mention, we have Forge World from Halo Reach. Now, Forge World isn't a regular kind of map, hence why it's not in the regular list, but it's a map that I would love to see make a return for no other reason for, than just for forging on it. Blank canvas maps for forging are great, but sometimes pre-existing natural elements like oceans, cliffsides, waterfalls, islands, hills and the like are equally as useful when it comes to creating a map, and honestly, in certain cases, they offer a style of terrain that no level of forging can really replicate. There's also so much utility that comes with a map of the size and variety of Forge World. So many customs that can only exist on a map as big and as varied in its terrain, like for example the DayZ game modes. I would love to see Forge World make its long overdue return, but at the same time, I would love to see it expanded on as well. We were always teased by the Skull Mountain above the hangar and by the comfy looking green forest with the beam tower on the cliffside. Let us go to those mountains and those cliff sides and forge there and explore. Bring it back bigger and better than ever. I think it's long overdue. In the number four spot, we have Waterworks from Halo 2. One of the most underrated maps of all time that's incredibly unique in both its setting and design. Waterworks was a fantastic BTB map that I found played best with Slayer, CTF and Assault. It's a four and a hydro facility inside a massive cavern, the roof of which is layered with stalactites that can be shot down. Now, given the map's emphasis on vehicles, notably heavy land vehicles and banshees, these stalactites are a great element of the map that led to some truly epic moments, like swatting a banshee out of the air or crushing a reef. The only map that ever did anything like this was the Lockout remake in Halo 2 Anniversary, and although I appreciated the idea, it kind of mess with the map's pacing. That said though, I do really want more Halo maps with environmental interactions, and I think Waterworks would be a fantastic map to bring back for that reason. It has great areas for vehicle combat, for aerial combat, and for infantry combat, thanks to its kind of intricate and heavily industrial foreigner hydro pump structure that creates this network of tunnels that branch throughout the rock from base to base. Waterworks is a map that I feel like is genuinely underrated, but at the same time, everyone seems to love it. It's in this kind of weird limbo state, and I know a lot of people would love to see it make its grand return in Halo Infinite BTB, so 343, please. For the penultimate honourable mention, we have Headlong from Halo 2. Now, as I've already mentioned, I think maps with extreme verticality will lend themselves very well to Halo Infinite's gameplay, primarily because of the grapple hook, and when it comes to verticality, what's better than a high-rise city, right? Or, well, at least a high-rise city that's in the construction. I always loved the urban combat that Halo 2's maps had, and Headlong was fantastic for it. Fighting through multi-story buildings blended really well with the vehicle combat, and also the air vehicles in particular. Honestly, now that I think about it, Headlong kind of feels a bit like a Battlefield style map, with the kind of building to building combat separated by open streets and pathways for vehicles to dominate, which honestly is a trait that I think would work really well with Halo Infinite's larger BTB. I think a dense city based map with an emphasis on verticality would synergize so well with a grapple hook, and if it weren't for one other city based map, Headlong would be a part of the main list. And speaking of that other city-based map, 
we have District, a Halo 2 Vista exclusive map that is unlike any other Halo map out there. District takes urban combat to the next level and actually has you fighting in narrow streets, buildings, alleyways, parking lots and even on rooftops. It took the essence of Old Mombasa from outskirts and perfectly injected it into a multiplayer experience. It's one of those maps that I love, but I never see anyone even acknowledge the existence of, let alone say they like, so honestly I think that District is a massive sleeper map. Urban vertical combat like this is the peanut butter to the grapple hooks jelly. Rooftop to street level combat in such a naturally designed urban environment like this would play so well and it's something that I would love to see happen. Please v 43 resurrect one of the most slept on Halo maps of all time, please, and let our Spartans finally free themselves and roleplay as Spider-Man through the alleyways of Old Mombasa. So, for our final honourable mention of the day, we have a map that I think speaks for itself. The Spire, from Halo Reach. Now, we've talked a lot about verticality in this video, and what map does verticality better than the Spire? I mean, this map was the highlight of Invasion for me, and at the time, it felt like a map that no game, Halo or otherwise, had ever done before. Honestly, the only map that I've ever played in any game before that gave me a similar vibe to the Spire was Siege of Shanghai from Battlefield 4. So, it's clear that I love the Spire, but you're probably wondering, if that's the case, why is it not on the main list? Well, there's a few reasons. Firstly, the map played far, far better in Invasion than any other game mode. Secondly, one of the best elements of the map was circling the top of the spire in a falcon, gunning down split jaws who dared to venture out onto the balcony. And thirdly, well, if you take the actual spire bit away, I think the rest of the map is, like, pretty average. So, I think at the very least, if you don't have the falcon and you don't have invasion, then the spire just doesn't hit the same, and as far as we know, Halo Infinite doesn't have either. Granted, it did probably play great with like one-sided attack and defense modes like one flag CTF, assault and stuff like that, but come on, let's, let's be honest, right? Nothing will ever rival Invasion for the Spire. If the Spire does ever come back though, fingers crossed with Invasion, I'd love to see a version of it that has two Spires, one for each team. Up that verticality and the epic scale of the map to 11 and the Spire will somehow get even better. In the number 2 spot, we have Terminal from Halo 2. Terminal is another fantastic urban warfare map, but this one has a very unique twist. It's set in one of New Mombasa's train stations, so naturally, there's an ultra high speed maglev train that zooms through the middle of the map and let me tell you, this thing takes no prisoners. Infantry, light vehicles, medium vehicles, and even heavy vehicles are all meaningless to it. The map itself as well is pretty great, with a nice mix of close quarters infantry combat and light to heavy vehicle combat in the streets and the courtyards, but the environmental hazard of the train is really what makes Terminal, and we've never had anything like it since. Because of the fact that both the sword and the overshield spawn on the train tracks, it adds this kind of extra threat to the game that you have to worry about. There was now a much greater risk than simply being sniped when jumping onto the really open train tracks to get that sweet, sweet Halo 2 sword. And like I said, no Halo map since has managed to replicate that. It honestly blows my mind that Terminal has never been remade purely because of that train, and I'd love to see Halo Infinite rectify that. 343, please, let me grapple to a high speed train and have it launch me into a wall at violent speeds. Please. And so, in the number one spot, we have one of my favourite Halo BTB maps of all time. Death Island, from Halo Combat Evolved. What District is to outskirts, Death Island is to the Silent Cartographer, and considering the Silent Cartographer is one of the best FPS levels ever created, it goes without saying that Death Island is pretty great too. Just like District, Death Island manages to capture the essence of what made the Silent Cartographer so great, and inject that essence into an equally great multiplayer map. It retains that feeling of exploration, of mystery and freedom, as you explore this desolate island through its winding canyons, across its sandy beaches, inside its mysterious foreigner bases, and atop its green cliffsides, hunting down enemies, escorting a flag carrier, or trying to protect the oddball. 
The added layer that Death Island has that the silent cartographer doesn't though is being able to fight on top of the cliffs as well and this section of the map kind of feels like its own mini map in a way. Yeah, it's accessible via ramps and teleporters, but the way it's designed, along with the vehicles and the weapons that spawn up there, kind of separate the combat that goes on up here from the combat that goes on down below. That said though, it's always super satisfying barraging people from up high with a fuel rod. There's a level of freedom that no Halo multiplayer map has ever recaptured, besides maybe Forge World I guess, that Death Island provides when you hop in a banshee. Going for a leisurely fly around the beaches, over the cliffs and through the ravine is just unparalleled. No map has ever replicated this. In short, Death Island is the silent cartographer of BTB maps in more ways than one. It's a map with unreplicated feel and gameplay style and one that I absolutely cannot believe has never returned. Death Island combined with Infinite's gameplay, the grapple hook and 12v12 BTB would be a dream come true. So please, 343, give us the Death Island remake we've deserved since 2003 in Halo Infinite. Please. And so, that brings us to the end of the countdown. Let me know what you thought of my map list. Do you agree with the maps that I chose? Disagree with them? Or do you want a map to return that I didn't even mention? If you do, then let me hear it down below in the comments. If you enjoyed the video and you want to help me on the road to 500k subs, then be sure to join part of the iconic 47.2% and hit that sub button right now. And so, with that said, I'm going to round the video out here. I want to give a massive thank you to Solo the Pink Spartan for becoming a new Primordial, and to Scott Richards and Deja Vu- <laughs> Right, Deja Vu, I'm not reading the rest of that name. <laughs> thank you very much to Scott and Deja Vu for becoming new iconic ones over on Patreon, and also to everybody else who continues to support me over there, and thank you all so much for watching, I really do appreciate it. And I'll catch you all in the next one.